uh, good morning. I, I, uh, I've been having this thought now for a while, and it, it's been getting to me, and I, and it's reminding me of something that I've come to know. Now, I, I've spent so much time, because Apple has taken up purchase of a lot of, well, I mean, it's bewitched the world, and in doing that, it, it has kind of caused me to be in a lot of debates with Apple fans now that I'm over here on the Xperia side of the equation. And one of the things that I fundamentally find myself in disagreement with them about is that they're constantly saying that Apple won this one by, you know, offering superior product offering to its competitors. And I just think that's hogwash. That's just somebody's opinion on the internet and they're spouting it and it's wrong. You know, <laughs> Apple's product offerings are not actually superior to their competitors. In fact, their competitors are offering much better product offerings than what they're offering. And yet Apple has successfully, through the use of marketing and advertising, tricked the world into thinking that it is actually offering something better than what the other people are doing. They say, think differently and you believe it, but they are every other company in the world no better in any way in fact their products are actually much worse than the competition that they're up against truth of, ma truth of the matter is that android's phones don't actually shoot pixelated video or photos this video is being recorded on an android phone right now that is the reality of what's happening it's a sony xperia 5 that it's being recorded on. The SMS messaging protocol is what Apple limits discussions between Apple users and Android users on over text message and the text messaging protocol, but through the use of applications like WhatsApp and alternatives, it is extremely possible to interact with Android users without these limitations and the limitations of the SMS messaging protocol. It is simply difficult to convince an Apple stan to install alternative applications to enable this kind of communication and to make sure that group chats don't go through this kind of shit. <sighs> the SMS messaging gateway is antiquated. It basically is limited to two megabytes. It was conceived in a time that predated all modern technology. It is, it was invented sometime in the 90s. It's the original text messaging protocol that, you know, was born when, you know, text messaging was brand new and it was, you know, just, just coming onto the scene. And, you know, I'm not even sure that that was, it's used by capitalism was really the beginning of SMS. I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain that the military had applications for it long before, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I think that it, I suspect that it's, its origin actually goes all the way back to the eighties. I'm not really certain or confident about that though, but it's a suspicion that I have about it. But, you know, the truth of the matter is that Apple isn't offering superior products. They've got you bewitched and convinced that their cameras are so much better than Androids. And re but in reality, it's that Apple is arbitrarily limiting the discussion between Android people and, you know, Android people, Android people and Apple people on their phones to this SMS messaging gateway that has limitations that make it impossible because the degree of compression that you'd have to use in order to send a video and compress it down to two megabytes would uh, it would be incredibly lossy, you know, so that it would reduce quality dramatically to do it. You'd lose almost all the, you know, and so it would show up pixelated to do it, you know, and so that's what I mean. This phone's being shot on a Sony Xperia, you know, like its video quality isn't actually shit. And so that, there you go, right out the gate, one of the big arguments that you see on the web debunked about all this, and I'm showing you that they're proving that they've bewitched you and tricked you. But another thing that's been getting to me ever since I bought this device and everything is, number one, Apple is being painted as if Steve Jobs married uh, design to, uh, you know, beauty and to the design of a computer. And I've got a case that I think is much prettier than any Apple I've ever seen coming for this phone that I'd love to show off in the future, you know, to show that I 
my vision of art is is way is light years ahead of the crap that a uh, crappy art that Apple admired in the first place. And yeah, they had style, but they had bad style, you know. And and they tried to introduce you know a rather cringe art to the fucking you know world of computing that would actually just make things even worse than simple beige. You know, their rainbow shit was so fucking cringe. Does anybody walk around in rainbow socks? You know, do you, do you see that going on anywhere? You know, and a half-eaten apple is their fashion symbol and all this. It's, 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 not, it's not that pretty, to say the least. You know, it's not that beautiful at all. And, you know, this is a company that distorted reality and tricked a lot of people into thinking what they were offering was better than other than other people's offerings in this space and these people that come along and bleed on in the comment section about how superior the iphone is and how they won for having the better heart are simply people that apple has successfully managed to deceive i'm sorry i don't make the rules it's the fucking reality of the situation they have you tricked they have conned you into believing what it is that you believe. I have more to say about this, ultimately. I remember, and holding this Xperia right now, I feel that there is uh, an extreme irony in all of this, in that, you know, finally, I have one device that I can put in my pocket when I won't have to carry other devices around with me when I go out in public, because it has finally done what Steve Jobs claimed that the iPhone would do, but the iPhone failed to deliver on the promise of, which was to marry the smartphone with the computer with the fucking music player that the iPod was. The thing is that wedding the iPod to the fucking phone would have required that the, uh, the iPhone have a memory card in the form of a micro SD card slot in order to do and, you know, the ability to support, you know, cards up to at least one terabyte, if not two, on the damn thing in order to actually wed, you know, the ability to, uh, you, you know, use, use it as your music player and carry one device around with you. And, I mean, maybe I say that because to this day I use SoulSeek and I'm a music pirate. You know, Apple didn't have to give a shit about music, you know, piracy, because when they made the iPod they weren't you know, necessarily as entrenched into the music business as they've now become with iTunes and everything. And now they're definitely in the music business, but I still, you know, after music became free for me, that was it. I'm not paying for it except to go to concerts. You know, maybe I'll buy your band t-shirt, but I'm not paying for the music itself unless you're, unless I'm paying to watch you perform it in front of me in person. You know, that's just the reality of of it all and you know the thing that got me and you know about all this is that in order to really replace to truly replace the iPod it would have been necessary to you know ultimately enable micro SD card support but Apple wouldn't do that because they might not make as much money when people don't buy you know the highest capacity phones and you know they can't put a stranglehold on things that keeps people trapped in the ecosystem because micro SD cards can be removed and easily programmed on any any operating system and so they don't you know they can't force you to you know to program it with an Apple product and that's you know those are the ultimate reasons why they won't do it but you know finally the Xperia gave us what Steve Jobs promised he would deliver on but then failed to actually do you know, and there's an irony there in that this made the propaganda that was spoken at his speech about the iPhone the, at the product launch of the iPhone at that event, you know, a reality. Steve Jobs' vision has finally been realized on a phone for real, and that is the, it has been realized on the Sony Xperia. It has not been realized on any other phone. This is the only phone that could ever actually do what Steve Jobs promised to do, you know, so far. You know, if Google and Samsung want to basically step up and offer that again, you know, then they will finally have achieved what Steve Jobs promised us all, but then failed to deliver on. It's why I'm with Sony now, because Sony did something that basically meant that this phone could be, you know, 
this phone in particular could ultimately be the one device that I carry around with me in a way that no other phone could have been. You know, it had a micro SD card slot. It was smart. It was high end. It, you know, at the end of the day was, you know, uh, good camera quality, good picture quality, you know, Android. It was, you know, it, it, it had the, the SD card slot. It had a good, you know, Snapdragon Gen 2 processor in it. It had all of that going for it. And so it was like, wow, this is the one phone that really is actually able to do what Steve Jobs lied to you all and said the iPhone could do. He lied. His phone failed to deliver on the promise that it had. And that is your supposedly superior iPhone. You make me laugh. You are a fool who has been deceived by a company that is really good at its slick propaganda that Joseph Go Goebbels would envy in its ability to deceive and trick people.